It is no secret that humans like to keep things organized. If there is a system in place to keep track of things, biology is no exception. It is a lot easier to study living things if we have a system that keeps some things apart from other things. It is for example, not possible for a person to remember all the flowering plants which comprise about 2.8 lake species. For better communication and understanding, it is necessary to organize this diversity into a classification scheme. This diversity has to be arranged in groups, so as to reflect the similarities and differences of their members and at the same time organize our knowledge of the plant kingdom into a convenient and useful manner. The framework for this purpose has been developed in the scientific classification from very early days of plant taxonomy and is called as taxonomic hierarchy. The classification system that has been traditionally most useful to biologists is one that groups related plants together into a series of hierarchical categories so that very close allied plants are placed together while as plants somewhat related are grouped near each other and unrelated ones are placed far apart. The organisms are classified into nested groups which are assembled into more inclusive groups which in turn into still more inclusive groups and so on. The different levels of groups so produced are recognized as series of hierarchical categories what Mason in 1950 called the taxonomic structure. The basic idea of doing so is to group species with similar characteristics together into genera, similar genera into families and similar families into broader groupings called orders and so on. For this purpose, the taxonomic categories were devised and they form the framework of taxonomic hierarchy. Now, let us analyze brief historical background of taxonomic hierarchy. Probably the first scientific study of plants was the attempt to classify them. At first, the plants were classified by artificial means into herbs, shrubs, undershrubs and trees as was done by Theophrastus around 300 BC. These simple categories became the foundation of an advanced classification based on natural relationships. However, the beginning of the modern scientific classification of plants and animals started with Carlos Linnaeus from 1707 to 1778, who classified all known species of his time. He developed both a system of naming of species and for organizing living beings and also devised practical techniques for the naming of groups of organisms as well as their ranking and ordering. However, Linnaeus was far from being the first thinker to try to classify life. Aristotle organized life in a ladder like hierarchy into 11 levels with plants on the bottom and humans on top and argued that each species had a unique form and could be classified by some of its key characteristics. Medieval European scholars were guided by both Aristotle and Bible and they believed that nature including all the species on earth reflected God's compassionate organization of the world. Linnaeus became convinced that he could organize all of life into single artificial system, one that would be his first attempt towards comprehending God's design in nature. Linnaeus system for naming species, which has not changed much since the publication of 10th edition of his Systema Natura in 1758, in which he used binomial system and gave the concept of a hierarchical classification. In his scheme, the major categories were given one of the several standard taxonomic ranks 
to indicate the level of similarities between all the members of the group. Linnean hierarchical classification was based on the idea that the species was the smallest unit and that each species is nested within a higher category. He classified living organisms into two kingdoms as planti and animalia and these kingdoms were further divided into lower ranks as class, order, family, genus and species. These linear categories were sufficient to serve the need of biological diversity in the late 18th century but were quite insufficient to classify the increasing number of species discovered since 1758. <music> Taxonomic hierarchy can be defined as a system of arrangement or a framework for classification in which Various taxonomic categories are placed in order of logical sequence. Hierarchy literally means a series of succession of different ranks based on inclusiveness, the least inclusive at the bottom usually a species and the most inclusive group generally a division or a kingdom at the top. A category thus designates a given rank or level in a hierarchical classification. It is important to note that a clear distinction should be made between categories and groups. A category is an abstract term while is the organisms placed in these categories are concrete biological objects. Further, categories are entirely artificial and subjective whereas groups of organisms are objective and non-arbitrary. It means that a plant may be a member of several taxonomic groups, each of which is assigned to a taxonomic category, but cannot be a member of more than one category. Taxon refers to a taxonomic group belonging to any rank, that is a species is a taxon at species rank, a genus is a taxon at genus rank, a family is a taxon at family rank and so on. The system of nomenclature provides a hierarchical arrangement of these ranks. Every plant is treated as belonging to a number of taxa. Once a taxon has been assigned to a particular category, the two are inseparable and the category gets a definite meaning because it now includes something actually occurring in nature. The word genus does not carry a specific meaning, but the genus rosa has a definite meaning and conveys about roses. To illustrate this, let us take the example of roses. All the Chinese roses together form one taxon known as Rosa chinensis. This represents a group of similar plants assigned to a taxonomic category species at the rank of species in the taxonomic hierarchy. There are about 100 to 150 such groups of kinds of roses each representing a taxon at the rank of species. When all these kinds of roses are grouped into an inclusive group, they form larger taxon called rosa and represents a genus at the rank of genus and stands at a higher rank in the taxonomic hierarchy than the rank of species. Above this rank are grouped the genus rosa and all other related genera like rubus, prunus and pyrus into a still large taxon at a still higher rank in the taxonomic hierarchy, the rank of family called rosaceae. In its turn, the family rosaceae together with some other related families of flowering plants are further grouped into a still large taxon at a still higher rank called order which in this case is rosales. The similar orders in their turn are grouped into still large taxon at still higher rank and the process continues until an all inclusive taxon 
of the rank of kingdom or in certain classification schemes the rank of domain is reached the use of such a hierarchy applies to all the plants and this inclusiveness of larger and larger groups is the basic feature of the taxonomic hierarchy The system of taxonomic hierarchy has been considerably expanded since Linnaeus. Various life forms have been discovered and some life forms have been moved into three new kingdoms as Monera for prokaryotes, Protista for protozoans and most algae and fungi resulting in a five kingdom classification of life. This five kingdom scheme is still far from the phylogenetic ideal and has largely been supplanted in modern taxonomic works by a division into three domains as bacteria and archaea which contain the prokaryotes and eukaryote comprising the remaining forms. The International Code of Botanical Nomenclature recognized seven principal ranks of taxa in descending sequence as kingdom, division or phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. Thus, each species is assignable to a genus, each genus to a family and so on. To each of these categories in the figure is assigned a taxon. Each taxon that is above another in this series, that is level order being above that of level family, is more inclusive than the taxon below it. This results in the kingdom being the largest, most inclusive category with a corresponding taxon of particular group of organisms and an individual species being the single unit around which all the groupings is focused. All species described must belong to at least seven ranks, one at each of the mandatory level, for example, as already discussed earlier. Rosa chinensis is a species belonging to rank genus Rosa, family Rosaceae, order Rosales, class Magnoliopsida, division Magnoliophyta and kingdom Plantae. In addition to principal ranks, the ICBN also provides for secondary and other ranks for taxa in a taxonomic hierarchy. The secondary ranks are generally used to subdivide the large groups. Thus, a large family may be divided into tribes and a large genus into sections, etc. If a greater number of ranks of taxa is desired, the terms for these are made by adding the prefix sub and super to the terms denoting the principal ranks. Taxa above the genus level are often given names based on the type genus with a standard termination. The termination used in Forming these names depend on the kingdom and sometimes the phylum and class as set out in the table. Notice that the ending will always tell you what rank you are dealing with, even if you do not recognize the word. For example, the word sterculacy could only refer to a family. Some of the important properties of taxonomic hierarchy which make a classification system more comprehensive and better understandable are as number first, different categories in the taxonomic hierarchy are ranked into higher or lower positions in accordance to their inclusiveness. More inclusive categories are ranked higher then less inclusive and less inclusive categories are placed lower than more inclusive. For example, category species is made up of a number of individuals, a genus being a unit of higher rank 
may consist of more than one species each with a number of individuals. It means that the category genus will usually contain more individuals than any of the included species hence is more inclusive and placed at a higher rank in the hierarchy. Similarly, family is ranked to higher position than category genus because it includes all genera of a particular family with all their species and intraspecific categories hence is more inclusive than genus which includes only species and is less inclusive than category family and therefore occupy a position lower than the position of family in the hierarchy. The second property is that the organisms are not classified into categories, but they are classified into groups called taxa and the word category only designates the relative position of a taxon in the hierarchy. Therefore, the categories designate rank in a hierarchy and taxa designate named groupings of organisms. The names are assigned to the taxonomic groups in such a way that the name gives an indication of the category to which it is assigned. The third property is that the characters shared by all members of a taxon placed in a lower category give us the characters of the taxon in the category immediately above it. That is all the characters shared by the species of taxon solenum make up the genus solenum and all the characters shared by genus solenum and all other genera in the solenaceae make up the family solenaceae. It is clear that the higher the rank of the taxon the greater is its range of variations. The graph represents the relationships between the rank of a taxon and its range of variations the number of common characters of its members and number of its members. <coughs> the graph indicates that higher the rank of a taxon, the greater is the range of variations, also fewer characters all its members have in common and large is the number of its members. In the taxonomic hierarchy, the relative position of a taxon is the placement of a taxon as a member of another taxon of the next higher rank. So, the taxa may be the same in rank, but differ in position. For example, the position of ester is as a member of the family Astraceae, and position of rosa is as a member of family Rosaceae. Rosa and ester are both at the rank of genus, but differ in position the former is in the family Rosaceae and the latter in the family Astraceae. A taxonomic hierarchy can be represented in a box in box scheme, wherein species are included in a large box at genus level, genera in still large box representing families, family in still are <coughs> large box designating order and so on. Ultimately to the largest box which represents the highest level of the kingdom. Now, we will see about the significance of the taxonomic hierarchy or the hierarchical system. The significance of such a system is clearly apparent. We may discuss groups of plants at the most appropriate level according to our needs. An agronomist may discuss about cereals. Here he refers to a group of plants on the family level, the Poesi family. Similarly, a forest conservator discussing the suitability of planting willows trees at a particular area, he refers to a group of plants at genus level, the genus Salix. A farmer discussing about paddy field refers to a group at species level, the species Oryzia steva. 
it is evident from the above discussion that lower we go in the taxonomic hierarchy, the more detailed our classification becomes and more targeted we are about the information of the plants concerned. And higher we go, more general would be our classification system. First of all, we will discuss kingdom. In biological world, kingdom or regnum is a taxonomic rank in either the highest rank or in new three domain system, the rank below domain. Each kingdom is divided into smaller groups called phyla or divisions. The rank kingdom in classification has been in a state of change due to ongoing research and discussion. Different models of classification systems provide different number of kingdoms of living organisms. As already discussed, Linnaeus described only two kingdoms as Planty and Animalia for the living world. Haeckel in 1866 added kingdom Protesta to the Linnaean kingdoms. Copeland in 1938 added fourth kingdom Monira, while as Robert Whittaker in 1969 adding separate kingdom for fungi divided living organisms into five kingdoms as monera protista fungi planti and animalia with a short span of time wu's in 1977 divided kingdom monera into eubacteria and archibacteria raising the number of existing kingdoms to 6 wu's later in 1990 recognized three domains above the order of kingdom as bacteria, archie and eukarya. Currently, many taxonomists use a system of six kingdoms that is animalia, planti, fungi, protista, archie and bacteria, while others describe five kingdoms as designated by Whittaker. Now, we will discuss about phylum or division. A phylum is a taxonomic rank below the kingdom and above the class level. Phylum is equivalent to the botanical term division. At the most basic level, a phylum can be defined in two ways. As a group of organisms with a certain degree of morphological or developmental similarity or a group of organisms with a certain degree of evolutionary relatedness. Now, we will discuss about class. In taxonomic hierarchy, the class represents a rank between phylum and order. The class is a distinct rank of biological classification having its own distinctive name was first introduced by a French botanist Joseph Piton de Tournefort in his classification of plants in 1694. Carlos Linnaeus was the first to use it consistently in dividing of all three of his kingdoms of nature, that is minerals, plants and animals. Now, we will discuss about order. The order is a taxonomic rank used in the classification of organisms, fitting in between class and family. The order is a distinct rank of biological classification with its own distinctive name was first introduced by a German botanist A. Q. Rivinus in his classification of plants in 1690. Now, we see about family. In taxonomic hierarchy, the family represents a taxon ranked between order and genus and constitutes a group of related genera. The taxonomic term familia was first used by Perry Magnol in, at, in 1689. However, he ranked it as taxon below the rank of genus. Now, we come to genus. A genus in taxonomic hierarchy is a low level rank below the family and above the level of species. Use it for living as well as fossil organisms 
and represents a group of closely related species. The word genus is a component of the name of an organism in binomial system of nomenclature. Mayer in 1957 defined genus as a taxonomic category which contains either one species or a monophyletic group of species and is separable from other genera by a set of discontinuous variations. Now, we will briefly discuss about species. Species is the basic fundamental unit of biological classification and taxonomic hierarchy. As a concept, we have so many definitions of a species and the word in itself has different meanings for different botanists. Not going much into the details of various definitions of species proposed in accordance with these concepts, a species can simply be defined as a group of organisms capable of interbreeding and producing fertile offsprings and reproductively isolated from other such groups or a single lineage of ancestor descendant populations which maintains its identity from other such lineage and which has its own evolutionary tendencies and historical fate. <coughs> now, we will briefly analyze some of the modern trends in classification, a challenge to linear hierarchy. For almost 250 years, the linear hierarchy has served as an important part of taxonomy's methodological foundation. During the last 150 years, the theory of evolution or more accurately the principle of common descent has steadily increased its contribution to taxonomy's theoretical foundation. After surviving the revolution brought about by acceptance of evolutionary view in reformation of taxonomy into new systematics and phylogeny, the linear hierarchy is being questioned. Linnaeus could only base his scheme on the structural similarities of the different organisms. The greatest change was the widespread acceptance of evolution as the mechanism of biological diversity and species formation. Following the 1859 publication of Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species, it then became generally understood that classifications are to reflect the phylogeny of organisms, their descent of evolution. This led to the evolutionary taxonomy, where the various extant and extinct are linked together to construct a phylogeny. Later changes associated with the development of taxon concepts based on the principle of descent led to the change in the interpretation of the linear categories as well as certain modifications related to use of linear hierarchy in representing phylogenetic relationships. More recently, taxonomists have considered the relevance of the principle of descent to nomenclature. They have found fundamental inconsistencies between concept of taxa in the principle of linear hierarchy and phylogenetic systems. <coughs>